for it TV. The world is thinking. And and I'll just end by by describing a couple of a couple of things that we propose as solutions. But I think the solutions are, are open ended. We've got to try a lot of things. The point is we've got to align ourselves so that we can think about solutions that do involve the scientific world. Uh, obviously, science education is in a poor state. Obviously, we've got to improve that. Obviously. Journalism and, and the collapse of science in the media is a massive problem, uh, that, and, and, and fixes for that are, you know, it's hard to know what to do uh, when you're standing up against gigantic uh, economic and technological forces. Um, but these, these are clearly things that are, that are keeping people away from science. But what about the scientists themselves? And what about, more particularly, the way that they are trained? And I want to end on this note. We've long heard concerns, I think they're valid, uh, that there are reasons to worry about the United States' competitiveness in science going forward. It's basically a rearview mirror kind of argument. We're ahead, but look at the car behind us. It's China. It's coming up fast. It's India. It's coming up fast. And there are many reasons to think that that is something that could be a real threat to the United States' economy down the road, um, if it's not already. But less heard, and so then this leads to the argument, we need to produce more scientists. We need to produce more scientists. Uh, what you don't hear is that at home, we're also not creating uh, enough opportunities for our scientific talent. Um, so here's a figure that's left out of the discussion too much. Only 7% of PhDs age 35 and under these days um, get tenure-track faculty jobs. The rest, not only do they often want, but they need. They need to do something else, given the odds in academia. Uh, so our argument is, well, you got all these people Si trained in science, knowing about science. And that means um, they come to this problem with a crucial leg up. The leg up is that they know what everybody else is missing. Right? They actually do have science on the radar. All right? They are on the science side of the divide. And they often want to do something to bring science across a divide. So our argument is, couldn't we, if we were creative and we had some money, <laughs> couldn't we kill b two birds with one stone? Couldn't we create new valves in the academic pipeline for some of these young scientists, because the pipeline's all blocked up. Um, and let them use their own ingenuity with, with some opportunity, with a fellowship, with a nonprofit job position, um, to become experts, uh, to specialize in reaching out to politicians, to the media, to the entertainment world, to the religious community especially. Um, can, we, can we create jobs to do this? Because I know that there are, pe there are people who would stampede towards filling those positions. Uh, and that's, that's part of the solution that we propose. And it's a bit blue sky in the sense that there, you, know, you need funding for it. Um, but that funding is going to have to come from, partly from the government. It's going to come partly from philanthropy. And partly it's going to have to re reflect a realignment of university priorities. And at the same time, universities for these young scientists, so many of whom are not going to become, uh, you know, not going to become their mentors, their professors. Universities, it's incumbent upon them to train them in other skills in communication because that's what they're going to have to go on to do. Uh, so that's, that's, that's starting to address the solution. And uh, what would the world look like if uh, everything that we call for is realized? I will leave you with a quotation uh, from a good friend of mine and, and the guy who founded, originally came up with the idea for the Science Debate 2008 initiative. His name is Matthew Chapman. He happens to be the great-great-grandson of Charles Darwin. He is a screenwriter in New York City. He's worked on uh, such films as Runaway Jury. Uh, and he put it like this. Instead of being derided as geeks or nerds, Scientists should be seen as courageous realists and the last great heroic explorers of the unknown. They should get more money, more publicity, better clothes, more sex, and free rehab when the fame goes to their heads. Thank you.